this is the, the first shot I did that got me thinking about putting things in grids. It's the Sainsbury's bag that I ripped up um, and then I thought it looked like meat. It was quite a strange image. And I didn't know what to do with all the shots. So I just put them into a grid and thought, well, that looks quite nice, but no one's ever going to want to buy that. But it was, it was a starting point. Um, and from there I thought, uh, of just how do I fill a square? So I took uh, 300 photos of the school library and sort of stitched them all together on Photoshop. Just, and I had no idea what it looked like. And I thought, it's quite exciting because I don't know what I'm doing. You know? And you end up halfway down and suddenly realise it might look all right. And there was quite a strange 3D effect to that. Um, and so I had another go doing something else. So I walked to uh, Sainsbury's car park and walked around to photograph in all the different coloured lines, you know, and cars were like looking at me, people in cars were like, what the hell are you doing? But I started building this and distorted all the lines with no idea how it looked, and it was just completely random chaos within a, within a grid. So it was about 100 photos, and I thought, right, well, you know, I'll try and control that a bit more now and go into the studio. So I, I photographed these stools from about 30 different angles. It's the same stool, actually, and I just overlaid them on Photoshop and thought, how do I construct lines and make them in, interact with each other? like a pylon in a way, you know, how the lines work, and so, yeah, I did that, not sure why, but just thought it might look quite nice, um, and so I just continued making photographs that combine lots of images within a grid, so I was driving to York in my dad's van, bored, taking photographs of out-focused cars on the other side of the road, and in streetlights, and then eventually chucked them all onto a black canvas, and created a bit of depth with the scale of it. Um, this is the key point in my, in my work where I suddenly decided I want to split these things into different panes. So there's 16 images of single clouds. They're not photoshopped. I waited till I found a single cloud in the sky and then I photographed it. It took quite a while to do. The only photoshopping is the arrangement of those clouds. But I like the fact that it's an impossible task because they're ever changing. You, can't, you, know, you can never get the proper typology of that. So then I moved on and thought, how, well, maybe I can make grids by closely cropping objects. So... You know, these are all trees in Sharnbrook. I guess it doesn't really matter if they're in Sharnbrook or not, but they are. Um, and yeah, the complex structure of nature in a, in a tight grid, you put them into a bigger grid and you get something more. This one's an interesting one because it's the, the bottles and, and glasses. And I say it's interesting because there's a bit of a dilemma for me. Some of them are coloured glass and some of them have coloured ink in them. So I tampered with this a bit to get a better image. And so I had a little bit of an internal dialogue myself. Should I have done that or should I just found things that were better? But I quite like the sort of pop art sort of nature of it. Um, this was for a photo competition in the Clanger. Um, do I get anything for saying that? Um, they're, they're just school buses. And what I like about this one was a friend said, I like the boats on the sea. And I didn't spot that. And I love the fact that people can add things to these that I, I, I wasn't aware of. But the idea is to try and not make it like a pattern. It's got to look random. Some, someone doesn't like it. I don't photograph people, this is as cl close as I get. This freaks some people out, some people don't like this. It freaks out my students when I show them. This is my year 10 class, back of their heads. You know, for safeguarding reasons, I didn't photograph the front of their faces. It's, it's a typology of haircuts, hair colour and head shapes, I guess. Um, and I tried to get people with the same size. Now this one's a good example of how I tried to do a black and white photograph, and then halfway through it realised that colour would work better. The, the students have to wear black shoes, it's their uniform, to wear black, but inside there's a bit of individuality to them. And I thought, wow, that's quite interesting. So I've actually captured something that's hidden that makes them, you know, the, each individual student's shoes. This is my stalker image where I went around Bedford photographing windows. <laughs> True story about this one. I could tell you about the art side, but I'll tell you the anecdote instead. A police car saw me doing it and I photographed a tree. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's no, there are no people in it. I, I, there, was, there was no way I was going to, like, you know. Yeah, I'll just move on. Um, Save by 20 seconds. I went to Hove. I did a wedding shoot. And I had two minutes to kill and I was really nervous because I don't, I don't really like doing wedding photos. I'm a bit scared of them. So I found these huts on the beach. And it's a great example of individuality of your own, you know, property. They're all exactly the same people create their own sort of beach huts. And so it's a good typology that way. This one, I have to be honest, didn't use a camera, I just scanned them at really high resolution. Stood up a load of pencils and a scanner, and it's a typology of the ends of pencils. I like the fact that they're flat, that there's no sense of scale. Some people don't spot their pencil crayon straight away, some, some people do. And yeah, I, I want people to not know what things are sometimes straight away. These are Christian's paints. I went around to his studio for, for social and then started photographing his paints. And, you know, he knows me well enough not to worry about things like that. But I like the fact that they're individual little sculptures and they're discoloured from use. 
And yes, when you buy them, they look the same, but over time they become individual, and therefore it's a good typology of how things change, which goes nicely into the leaves, which change naturally. Um, controversially a bit pretty, maybe, I don't know. Uh, you know. It's not quite as edgy as I'd like, maybe, but I don't know what type of leaf that is, but it's all the same, and it changes colour. I'm, I'm patronising everyone. <laughs> we'll move on. Uh, look, actually, the stems are the interesting bit on that. Um, so this was uh, De Paris Avenue before they put the new paving stones down. I just took photos of all the different cracks on the floor and thought, just like with the chairs and the car park in Sainsbury's, I like the way the lines cause sort of chaos within a structure. And yeah, some people tried to make letters out of it. Some people see bums in it, Katie. And um, yeah, now this is where I'm, I'm not sure I'm going in the right direction, but I put it in anyway, because this is me going in a bit of a tangent in my work. It's not a typology, really, it's just one art apron, but it's all the different bits of paint on the apron. So I'm creating individual sort of miniature abstract paintings and looking at things in detail. And that, I used a scanner again for that one. Um, some of my students think these are ping pong balls, but I like the fact that they get it wrong, because it shows that without scale, you lose track of what things are. They're actually pill packets, and when you buy them, they're obviously the uniform, they're, they're, you know, they're all the same shape. And when you push the pill out, you, you create a unique shape. And it's kind of a typology of all the... When you desperately got a headache and try and get the pill out, you get a different shape. This is my last slide. Oh my God, it went very quick. Um, this is the most abstract typology I've done. I took the lens off a camera and took photos without a lens on it. And you get this weird discoloration. There's no editing at all on it. I just pointed at different things and, and the camera couldn't cope. And so you end up with this sort of colour thing. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs>